At least 120 countries are expected to attend the 19th Non-Allied Movement Summit and G77 China Summits at Munyonyo in Kampala. In such summits, member countries meet to discuss goals as development countries and the way forward and the implementation of the resolutions thereafter. The laws and laws governing the NAM and G77 China summits at every climax of the summits, member states are grown declarations and resolutions. Because for me, for a body to be relevant, I would, it would have to be like a security council, a decision of the security council, which, would be, which, which can enforce and implement its own, what it has come up with. If those resolutions, declarations, uh, uh, policies they come up with are uh, to make any sense, the body requires uh, institutional and organizational reform. The declarations and resolutions from the two summits must be implemented in 120 member state countries. Because what normally happens is that you get to have a treaty depending on the country. So, so for example, Uganda is what we call a dualist nation. Uh, there are other countries that are monist nations. Now, with a monist nation, once you sign up on a treaty, it becomes law and implementable immediately. In Uganda, however, and other dualist nations, having executed the, the, the treaty, then you must bring it to your parliament and say, this is what we agreed upon and the parliament must sanction or, or approve or ratify. And if there is need for legislation to be enacted, then specific legislation, a specific law will have to be passed. Since each member country has its own home laws and policies, the implementation of the declaration or resolutions may seem hard. I, I think it's uh, very easy because you see first, uh, the heads of state have to accept that this is a policy permissible in our country. So I don't think it's a very difficult thing to do. It's an easy thing to do. However, if it has a financial implication, it may take longer to implement because of the absence or unavailability of funds. Every state that comes and sends a delegate um, participates in the negotiation. So now it depends on one political willingness, you know, uh, the political leadership must be ready to do so. Uh, two, your economic bag, so depending on what you are required to do, uh, hopefully if you have the finances or you don't have the finances, that will determine how well uh, you implement whichever resolutions uh, you agree upon. There are bodies like UN or AU, G77, and the NAM which was formed in 1947 to tackle issues affecting or benefiting member countries. Because uh, NAM is not a coercive entity and uh, members have joined uh, voluntarily out of their need uh, to fulfill uh, common objectives, especially in the area of development. Um, it is very likely that uh, most of the objectives passed in this summit shall be fulfilled because of the goodwill of the member states who are party to NAM. Uganda has been a part of the preferential trade area, uh, East African community, and there are certain advantages of being part of the East African community. We are now talking about one passport, um, the budgets are read at the same time, we have a court, the East African Court of Justice, that listens to issues that pertain to the community. So there are certain advantages that come uh, with that, you know, protection and negotiation for better markets, better businesses. Now with NAM as well, you may have particular things you want to do as an individual nation. But because you are part of the non-aligned movement, you, you'll be assumed or you, you, you should be able to align with the values of, of NAM as opposed to going it your own way. With NAM developing countries share a common goal, however legal minds say there are still existing gaps which member countries need to address. If they met and put in place systems 
mechanisms, reforms, which make them relevant today. It will be a very good thing. Many of them are South, to, are South, South countries who have the same kind of problems. So it is an opportunity for them to, to, to reform it, to meet today's challenges. Some of the challenges will be if uh, a new leadership crops up and a new government that does not agree with the values of NAM comes up. So we need a block of consorted common voices that can propel our personal interests as developing countries. If we're talking about development, how do we do sustainable, responsible development? We keep our green, we keep our nature, but also metamorphose into a productive uh, entity. Legal minds also highlight major issues member countries should discuss during the summit. Well, I think economic independence is something that is uh, very important. Um, as long as we are not totally economically independent, then most of these resolutions will always be subject to who is going to finally find the money to do whatever is needed. The question of environmental protection is critical. It is even going to be a security issue. We are mortgaging these countries. It's going to affect future generations. When we are overborrowing, we can't pay, and not even affect future generations. It's affecting that we cannot now do service, service delivery. I, I think number one should be how do African countries access cheap capital? Because we need money to develop. We need money to build industries. But it's becoming extremely impossible for us to achieve those uh, if we do not have access to cheap capital. What I, can, what I would advise to have on agenda in the next meeting, institutional reforms of, non, non, of, of NAM. The type of institutional reform which will make that body relevant to today's challenges. The 2024 Non-Aligned Movement Summit is on the theme deepening cooperation for shared global influence while the G77 China Summit will be held under the theme Leaving No One Behind. Deborah Namamode, UBC News. <laughs> <laughs>